Happy belated new year and welcome to a brand new rewatchable favourite video. I haven't done one of these since last September, which was American Psycho, and to kick off 2024, I will be talking about the drama film The Shawshank Redemption from 1994, which is honestly crazy to think that this film is going to be 30 years old this year. This was based on the short novel called Rita Hayworth and the Shawshank Redemption, which was by the no other than Stephen King. And yes, I'm talking about that Stephen King behind a lot of horror novels, which by the way, I do own a few of his books. Some people might know Stephen King as an actor who's had some minor roles of his stories that were adapted into films. Honey, come on over here, sugar buns. This machine just call me an asshole! But anyway, that's enough about the author, let's get back to Shawshank. The film stars Tim Robbins and Morgan Freeman, and this was written and directed by Frank Darabont. For those who don't know, Darabont is more known as a writer than a director for films and television shows. Some of his other work that I shall mention would be The Green Mile, The Mist, The Blob Remake, The Adventures of Young Indiana Jones, the Walking Dead Season 1, which was a shame, Mob City, and many more examples. The story of the Shawshank Redemption is about over the course of several years, two convicts form a friendship, seeking consolation and, eventually, redemption through basic compassion. I came across this film in 2013. My family had a copy of the film on DVD and recommended I should check it out. But what got me more interested in watching the film was noticing on IMDb that it is classed as their highest rated film on their top 250 films list, and to this day, it is still first place on the website. This was a time when I was actually watching a lot of films on that list anyway. After I watched it for the first time, it became one of my favourites. As years went by, I of course rewatched it many more times, just recently in preparation for this video. I still absolutely love The Shawshank Redemption. I find it to be a powerful piece of storytelling, and it is still one of my favourites. Before I dive into the review, I will be talking about spoilers. Well, some of them. But anyway, there is a spoiler warning right there, and without further ado, let's crack on with it. The first thing to talk about is Thomas Newman's score. Newman's score helps to grab the audience from the very start of the first scene, where we see our main character named Andy Dufresne, played by Tim Robbins, who one night is in a car, looking a bit drunk and heartbroken from his wife cheating and divorcing him. How we find out about this is when the film flashes forward to Andy in a courtroom, being questioned and accused of murdering his ex-wife and the guy she was having an affair with. What helps the score? It presents the genre of contemporary classical music and fills a lot of mystery, tension and sadness for our main character and the setup of the film. It's full of subtlety and never over the top to be dramatic or depressing for a film like The Shawshank Redemption. In addition, it also helps the film's mostly serious, sad and powerful tone, which is always full of subtlety from start to finish. When it comes to the cinematography, captured masterfully by the great Roger Deakins, it does a fantastic job of bringing you into our main location. From the first shot of an establishment of this massive size, scope and scale of Shawshank Prison, from then and through Throughout, it all supports the rough, tough and gritty accurate look of the production design they included. Towards the real prison they filmed at, called the Ohio State Reformatory, in Mansfield, Ohio. Tim Robbins' lead performance as Andy Dufresne is incredible and believable. Just from the look on his face, when he gets sentenced to Shawshank Prison, he shows a lot of fear and sadness about what is going on in his mind, and processing the difficult change he has to face. At the start, he comes across to be a private and quiet person, but then later when we, the audience, and Morgan Freeman's character gets to understand a bit about who he is when he opens up of what his personality is like, he is actually a very intelligent person. From his occupation of being an accountant, the changes he brings to Shawshank Prison, which I will be talking about later, and the bunch of stuff that he requires from Red, 
that will be important later in the story. Speaking of the character named Red, Morgan Freeman's performance as Ellis Boyd Reddin is full of likability and is a cool, calm and popular individual. His character is that guy in the prison who knows the ins and outs of prison life and knows how to get things for people, for example Andy being one of them. It's an interesting direction from both King's short novel and this film that Red is the first person narrative. Like us, he is trying to understand the character study of Andy Dufresne and to have an opinion and perception about life behind bars. For himself, trying to stay optimistic that one day he will get an approval for his parole so he can leave prison life for good. Andy, Red, and even the other prisoners that they are together in a group help each other out during the difficult moments to bring some form of normality. For example, when Andy is in the infirmary and after being discharged, he heads back to his cell and sees a bunch of rocks for him to sculpt and a poster of Rita Hayworth from Red and his friends. This example establishes well and makes all of their chemistry great. Also, with the gifts, it's again all important much later in the story. A couple more performances I wanted to mention were Clancy Brown as Captain Hadley and Bob Gunton as Warden Norton. They're both very appropriate for the two roles of their vicious and cruel performances. Brown and Gunton both do a fantastic job creating this strict and rough atmosphere for the environment of Shawshank Prison. The film has great dialogue. It feels a mixture of being realistic and poetic. For example, in a poetic moment, Andy has this serious conversation with Red about time affecting his life in prison, as already many years have gone by, and Andy says, get busy living or get busy dying. This shows he is desperate and wants to leave Shawshank Prison because time is running out and he still wants to live a life. A realistic dialogue example, I would say, is the powerful scene when the character Brooks Hatlin, played by the great James Whitmore, is out of prison from parole and is back into the big wide world. Unfortunately for Brooks, he cannot cope to adapt to the change in the fast society he has missed and does not recognise the world he is living in anymore. He does not feel he has a place anymore and sadly takes his own life. Just before he does, he leaves a message in his room that says Brooks was here. This shows he wants someone to notice that he has been there. In regards from him that he did not honestly feel that he he made it back to the outside world of the world he once knew, but he did live a life once. While all of this has been shown to us of what he is experiencing and what he is telling Red, Andy and the others from the letter he sent to them, these two examples from the dialogue are great uses of show and not tell, and I keep on using this word but it is full of subtlety. While the Shawshank Redemption does have a lot of doom and gloom moments, it also shows these positive little moments of normality that Andy creates and helps the prison, other prisoners and the staff. For example, in one scene, Andy earwigs at Captain Haddy about his financial issue with a relative. So what Andy does is he uses expertise in finance and recommends what he should do. And from there he helps out another guard with his children's education fund, and then many more come after that. This moment helps Andy gain popularity and trust, and again, normality for him to keep his mind productive, but also still have a purpose and use for his occupation in accounting. Another example of little moments of normality would be the scene when the opera by Mozart is playing on a record player. When Andy is in Warden Norton's office, sitting and relaxing on his chair and playing this Mozart song out loud for the prisoners outside to listen, it's a very famous and unforgettable scene that shows what it used to feel like remembering what music used to be for them but most importantly it's a form of feeling about freedom for Andy, Red and the rest of the prisoners. Discussing these two examples adds to the tone of the Shawshank Redemption having a mixture of light and dark moments to experience and remember. In addition, this provides evidence of the film's script within the themes which I'll be talking about shortly. When it comes to the pacing, it is slow and steady, but it's one of those films that wants to take its time to present the story and how essential it is. When it comes to the story's themes, this is a film about friendship, suffering, injustice, transformation, hope, 
and freedom. I would say of transformation would be about going into prison and then coming out if you have changed or maybe the world has itself. For example, going back to the character Brooks Hatland and that powerful scene. When the world has transformed quickly and unexpectedly, affected him for being in prison for 50 years, and making the struggle to be on a whole other level. I would say with hope is one of those try not to bring up your hopes problem, where Red at the start is hopeful a couple of times when he goes for his parole hearings and keeps on getting rejected. Then he loses hope and just stops believing. In addition to believing the effect Brooks went through, expecting that the world is going to be great and welcoming, but the reality he faced was not. Near the end of the film, when Red goes for another parole hearing, he just loses all hope, he feels fed up, tired, and he's just like, look, let's just get this over with, I am done with these parole hearings. But then unexpectedly, he gets an approval for his parole. An example I can give from the Injustice theme would be the scene when Tommy gets shot. A character who comes into the film and Shawshank quite later on, he also possibly knows who killed Andy's ex-wife. One night outside the prison, Norton asks Tommy if he will testify in court about what happened that night. Tommy says yes, and then gets shot by Hadley, ordered by Norton. This scene about the theme of injustice shows the cruelty and lies of Warden Norton and the law. About why Tommy died of an escape attempt and not given Andy the chance to be released of what has been revealed about his ex-wife's murder. With Freedom, I would say partly is the Mozart scene, but it's more about Andy escaping Shawshank Prison. What works from this theme is how it is executed in the film's execution, of how unexpectedly we don't know until near the end of what has been going on the entire time in Andy's cell, and why he requested and was given specific objects by Red. Examples are the small rock hammer, Rita Hayworth poster, and many more. Again, thinking it's for him to make himself at home, but for his use, the tools are really to help him escape. I think what adds to the theme of freedom is when Andy gets out of the prison from the pipe. It is powerful and shows this climactic moment, a feeling of achieving freedom and concludes to support that as a central theme of the Shawshank Redemption. I think the reason why it is a rewatchable favourite of mine is it keeps on reminding myself about how important and essential the themes are, and how real the story can feel on levels of genre and subject matter. So yeah, I pretty much love this film. I would highly recommend it, and yeah, I went a bit too crazy on the discussion of this film. Based on my letterbox rating, I'm going to give The Shawshank Redemption five stars out of five. Before I go, The Shawshank Redemption was released on the 14th of October, 1994, I know it's a bit early, but anyway, happy 30th Shawshank. Thank you so much for watching my first video of 2024. Please let me know your thoughts about the film in the comments below. Appreciate the support as always. Until next time.